<laughs> all right guys <clears throat> let's do it all right y'all back again man it's been some time oh man it's been about two months or so we've been uh going going through some stuff getting everything locked in focusing a lot on the acquisitions doing a bunch of stuff there but that's neither here nor there we're not here to talk about that we're here to talk about another special guest we've got vlad coming in today uh, we were just having a little conversation Vlad has over 900 units in assets under management. This guy is operating at a, at a high level, right? So there's definitely a lot of things that I think he could bring to the table, and he's going to talk about some of those here. Um, guys, as always, if you get some value, like and share this stuff. You, we don't ask anything in return other than that you share this with other people and spread the news of what we're trying to do here, which is just bring value to people for free. So without further ado, man, Vlad, tell the people who you are and what brought you to us today. Sure. Yeah. Well, Jada brought me here today. Yeah. Uh, but because it's like 940 and, uh, you know, not a lot of people would uh, get me to speak. Uh, but yeah, uh, my name is Vlad Arakchev. Yeah, I'm in Jersey and uh, I am full time uh, in real estate. Uh, before that, I actually started if, if going back. Um, I didn't know anything about real estate before at all. I was a graphic designer, had nothing to do with real estate whatsoever. And then COVID hit, right? So I got furloughed. Uh, pretty much, I would say, lost my job. And I'm thinking, well, I'm going to get another one. Um, within a few months or so, then a few months gone by, I got nothing and I'm married, I have two kids, I got three cats, you know, mortgage and everything. So <laughs> I'm thinking, okay, we got to do something because this is not working and this this COVID thing is not ending. And uh, my wife suggested, hey, why don't you be a real estate agent, right? So I didn't want to because number one, I didn't know anything about real estate and number two, why would I change my job if I have pretty, you know, I think a pretty cool job, I think, you know, so being a graphic designer. Um, anyway, but yeah, I got my license. You know how she convinced me, though? She said, do you know there's this active participant status and uh, we can save a bunch of money on taxes? And I'm like, what is that? So I've done some digging around and yeah, apparently... If you're an active participant in a passive activity, being a real estate agent or owning some Airbnbs, for example, mm -hmm. uh, then you can, uh, uh, it's it's huge on taxes. And if you uh, live together with your spouse and uh, uh, file taxes jointly, you can write off a lot of, a lot of taxes. So that, she got me hooked on that one. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. So I got my real estate license, started selling houses during COVID, which was just absolute craziness mm -hmm. uh, i've done bad job at it and then i went to a networking event with masks and everything here locally in jersey and uh, people were talking about like wholesaling and flipping and i got hooked so i'm like what is this wholesaling thing so i started doing that uh quickly realized it wasn't for me it was just too it just it was just wasn't for me i i i because my ultimate goal was to get passive income, right? I want my money to work for me. But why am I substituting one job for another job? I didn't want to be a wholesaler. Because what I realized is, as soon as you stop producing, that's it, it dries up. Yep. As soon as you stop calling or reaching out or, you know, getting properties, everything stops, and you have to do it like nonstop even more. So, um, still being an agent like i said don't have a w2 anymore uh got some income going that way and then we got some uh single family which was great it was going great so the first single family was in south jersey by philly and it was netting a thousand dollars a month which is awesome we got yeah, a great, great deal off an mls and uh yeah yeah uh, we had we actually me being an agent i didn't even I didn't even negotiate the the deal. I, I hired an agent because I was just so unsure in my skills. So uh, it was netting a thousand dollars a month. Everything was great, but then I quickly realized that when somebody stops paying you in a single family, you're making zero, right? You're still paying the bank though, 
you're still paying taxes, you're still paying everything else, but you're making no money. So that took me to think like, okay, let me try. What about like duplexes and quads and stuff like that? And then my wife uh, started reading about multifamily, right? So she knows uh, multifamily. She's a commercial property appraiser. And uh, she goes, well, why don't we go to this event? Uh, and she bought us tickets to MFIN. It's Multifamily Investors Nation, I believe, in uh, Dallas. Yeah. No, it was Houston, Houston, Texas. So picture me flying to MFIN. Uh, you know, the ticket was like a thousand dollars. I'm freaking out. I don't know what to do. Uh, but after literally a day at the event, I got hooked. I met so many people. It was just my mind was blown. I completely stopped with wholesaling. With I still do some flipping. I lend uh, from my Roth to flippers and uh, do quick transactions that way. But I don't do anything active in it. I can't. Uh, according to uh, uh, IRA mm -hmm. rules and regulations. But anyway, yeah, I got hooked on multifamily, came back home. Uh, obviously, I'm not going to invest in Jersey. It's a blue state. I don't do blue states. I wonder I, why. <laughs> well, yeah. So I needed mentorship, right? Because I didn't know anything about multifamily. Got hooked up, uh, interviewed a bunch of mentors. Uh, if you're curious, I joined Jake and Gino. It's a multifamily community. And uh, after that, about eight months after, it was a lot of education, networking and stuff like that. I identified my markets. Um, I'm very specific in my markets. Initially, I wanted to be in Florida. Uh, that was short-lived. I bought seven units. There's some land, which we're flipping now. Uh, but our, my main markets is Midwest. I buy in Kansas City heavily. The whole Kansas City MSA, I prefer the Missouri side. Uh, Texas, I love DFW, Houston. Uh, I'll do San Antonio as well and Carolinas. So um, I'll, I would say about eight months after we started, you know, after like the first deal, which was unsuccessful, by the way, but it really doesn't matter. Um, it was like a snowball effect. Mm -hmm. right but it, it needs some time but the funny thing is i'm still a real estate agent right so why because if you're a gp in a multifamily deal you're making no money now right the money comes at a refi or at a sale so if you're two three years into this game please make sure that you have some money coming in. You need some income. Unless it's a joint venture, which is cash flowing right away. It typically, it doesn't work this way. But let's just say, like, I have a JV in Kansas City, 40 units, right? We bought it two years ago. It started paying three months ago. Because we, we were turning the units. We were doing heavy lift. We were just pouring a whole bunch of money into it, right? So And, and it's paying very little. So it there is no way it can support you. But I know when we sell it, I'll be good. But so just think about it this way. Make sure you have some money coming in from some some source because you got to live on something. Do not depend on uh, passive income now. You it, It's this, this saying some people say that 357. So you got to basically bust your butt for three years you'll see some results three to five by seven. If you around, you'll be good. So it's a long game. It's a long game. It's that that's why a lot of people say, I'm going to flip now and flip houses and then reinvest that money into multifamily or something like that. Cause flips are pretty quick, right? It can take three months. It can take six or wholesale, same thing, but it just depends. Like I said, I still do do that with partners, but not not too much. Uh, but I always look for opportunities to, you know, obviously make money because I'm very active in the space. So that's what I kind of do now. Uh, do both things, literally make money here, being an agent. Whatever I don't spend, I reinvest into multifamily. So that's my path of uh, how my money moves, literally. And uh, whatever I have in my Roth, 
in my HSA account, in my CISA, in my 401k. Well, I don't have 401k anymore. I moved it. Uh, that I lend on quick transactions to flippers to, let's say, uh, uh, quick earnest money deposits or something like that, you know, like really quick transactions to really grow my retirement accounts because because they're tax free and that that's what I do uh, when it comes to uh, quick transactions when it comes to my 401, not 401k, but my retirement accounts. I love it, man. There is so much that you just dropped that you kind of like glossed over it like it was nothing, but there's a ton of stuff in there that most people don't don't know about, right? Let's just go to the, like the most recent stuff that you're talking about because I know my that's how you met Jada and my wife is also in that group and they've been they just went to that mastermind which you probably were there as well in I think it was Jacksonville. Um, but th oh, that's the money what, is, yeah, yeah. I, I missed is. it, unfortunately. Uh, uh, I went to the last one, the one before that, but I missed this one. Gotcha, gotcha. Well, essentially, guys, what that what that group is. If you're looking to get into multifamily or already there, I mean, it's that's a great resource to jump into. Even if you're not, they're teaching a lot of stuff about money and how to move it and how you can manipulate it in your benefit. And that's exactly what I was just talking about with all of those accounts, right? Probably some of those, some of, some of those accounts you've maybe never have even heard of, right? I, I've heard of them because I've been in this space and I've heard of some of the things they're talking about, but what they are learning about are the things I didn't know, right? All the specifics on how to actually use them and what you can truly do with them is, is pretty great stuff. And I'm not going to sit here and start explaining it like I truly know, because I don't, right? Disclaimer, consult your CPAs, you know, all that good stuff, right? But there's, there's a whole world out there that people don't talk about, right? It's the world of the wealthy. And, and Vlad, I know you know this because you're in that group and I'm, I'm hearing it from the ladies all, all day, every day. And it's it's pretty spectacular stuff, like really. It's crazy stuff. It's, it it's, really it's is. absolutely, what group is it? It's money is. Mm -hmm. If you just, uh, it, basically how we learned about this is there's this thing called Aspire World Tour. It's uh, just any other, speaking world too they have a bunch of speakers like kevin hart and the rock and i don't know uh, uh baseball players like a rod and stuff like that they just it, it's like uh, i heard about them they they came to new york city because i'm right by new york um to the javits center and about three thousand people showed up so what happened is the the main guys uh came up on stage and said hey listen we do this thing uh we educate you how to manage your money so instead of fidelity managing your money you do managing of your money and uh about three thousand people out of those i would say i don't know a hundred basically showed up maybe 200 showed up so it's pretty much like and, and it didn't even cost anything it was like 50 dollars. and then they showed how wealthy people move money so you don't need a lot of money you just need some money, like for example, to open, you know, what is it like Roth? It's seven thousand dollars a year, which is uh, not huge, but I mean, it's 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 you know, you need some money, mm -hmm. and then what do you do with that? Obviously, you have connections, so you can call somebody like a wholesaler, for example, and be like, "Hey, I can have I I can give you five thousand dollars earnest money deposit, and then you give me back uh, I don't know my five thousand plus two thousand when the deal closes so typically wholesale deals go quick so you can make two thousand dollars in like no time at all don't forget it's tax-free goes into your roth so it, it's crazy stuff crazy stuff i love it yeah and it's so funny because we're we're in a lot of similar spaces like everything you were talking about are related so much to like i, I agree 100 percent about this this is the long term i mean we've said that it's been beaten to death uh, over and over that this is a long-term business, specifically multifamily is what I'm talking about. Like you don't want to jump in and expect to get paid right away. It's going to be something that's over time and you need something active to replace that. And that's the reason that we kind of stepped away for the month or two on doing the, the, our social media and building the brand that we've been doing so much is because we had to take a step back and really focus on our active income, which 
unfortunately it's wholesale, right? I'm the same as you, man. I really don't, I don't enjoy it. It's not what I like to do, but I know how to do it well. And it's brought us a lot of money along the way. And we can take that money, pay our bills, and then go put it into what we really enjoy doing, which is the multifamily stuff. So I agree exactly 100% with what you're saying. The other thing I wanted to bring up, and you mentioned this a couple of times, is it seemed like at every point where you kind of grew to the next stage, your wife was was helping you along or, or that push that you needed. And I was I was loving it because on my end, it's the same way, right? I probably would have never jumped into real estate if my wife, same time frame, actually, right in the middle of COVID, we lost our jobs, had to start all over. And she was like, look, I'm, we got to figure something out. Like, I don't want to be able to work because someone told us we need to figure out how to go make money for ourselves because we want to. Right. So I thought that was it, super powerful. It, it, it's exactly how it happens. And it, I understand that it doesn't happen with everyone. Um, some people just have to do it by themselves. It's just uh, she actually pushed me towards it. And I'm very happy that she did. And she was persistent and it took some time. And listen, I read Kiyosaki's book. Yeah, I, I got the book, but it didn't do anything for me. I'm just being honest. I, I understood the book. I got it. But I didn't know how to apply. Mm -hmm. Right. I wasn't ready. I, I got the concept, but I was still in a W2 mentality. I, I was still I, I, I didn't think as a business person. I, I still thought that, yeah, I'm going to go. I do my thing. I come back at five. And then I'm gonna, you know, watch TV or something like that. I, I was not in that in, in that in that time. So you, you know, they say like uh, the, when the student is ready, the teacher will appear. It it I I think it's that type of thing where you know read the book, got it, didn't get anything out of it. Mm -hmm. it. It was fine, good read, but then when the time was right, everything clicked. You know, I'm like, oh, that's what it means now. So I got it. So it, it's just, it's just you have to kind of grow into it, I think. So and and listen, I don't mind if you if you look at, you know, all the millionaires and all the people that, um, you know, uh, started all their businesses and things like that. They started it in the 40s and you know even later. So I would never even think like oh my gosh it's too late for some people you know some people say oh yeah it's too late for me or something but just just listen to it henry ford started ford company at 40 years old right walton started walmart at like 44 colonel right? sanders Ad at 65 yeah adidas at 48 mcdonald's at 52 i mean come on e-trade guy at 63 what's his name bill porter you know sanders kfc started at 62 so uh, Red Bull, 53. So you see how everything just like as soon as you reach a certain level, you'll be like, you know, and you can you, you can never go back and you can say, oh, my gosh, I, sh I should have started early. Yeah, you, you couldn't. Mentally, you weren't there. Like I, I think back in my 20s, I mean, come on everybody's like, oh, what would happen if you go back to your 20s? I'm like, yeah, buy a bunch of Bitcoin or something like that. But, <laughs> you know, I was there, but I thought it was a joke. So, yeah, no, I, that's a hundred percent right, man. I, that's, that's crazy. I, I, it's crazy to go back and think, right. What would you really have done differently? And you're probably right. You probably wouldn't have done much differently. Yeah, you would have had that information, but that knowledge without the action behind it and the true mindset that you need, it's it's not going to go anywhere. Yeah. So this is a really, really cool perspective. Yeah. Plus um, education, it just you know, it's really important. It's really important. It, it, it you know, my, one of my biggest thing is like, for example, just to give you an example, Jake and Gina and all those masterminds like Rod Cleef and Sumrock and. Uh, you know, there's there's so many out there, right? Uh, Massive Capital is doing one. There's tons. They charge like twenty thousand. So if you think about it, would you pay twenty thousand to learn something? Well, that's what I thought, right? But if you flip it differently and say, would you invest twenty thousand to make yourself more valuable, right? So if you don't take it, don't take the education. That's fine. You can still do it right you can you can you can still succeed just attach yourself to an operator find the deal find the money you can do it it's just going to take you longer right but 
if you invest 20,000 in yourself, then your people view you differently, right? Like for, I'll give you an example. So I wanted to invest in Texas. I'm in, I'm in New Jersey. How can I do that? Right? So if I call somebody in Texas and I'm like, Hey, listen, I want to invest with you. People look at me like I'm a crazy person. Like, who are you? Right? Yeah. I don't know you. Why would I even let you into my circle? But when you are part of a mentorship or a community and you call them up and that's exactly what I've done. I called, Hey, Tony, Hey, uh, Shirai, or Hey, you know, uh, uh, can I underwrite with you guys? And they're like, oh, yeah, you joined Jake and Gino. Yeah, of course. Come on, let's underwrite together. And that's exactly how it happened. It just took so long because the first three months, I'm like, what are they talking about? I don't know what's going on here. I was like, you know, first time I opened up a model, it was just completely crazy. Yeah. Uh, but uh, you you kind of get into the groove of things. So I, I believe to invest, instead of, let's say spending money on something, spend money on yourself, invest in yourself. That's that's the most important thing. So education is huge. And those network events are the biggest things ever. You can go to, in my opinion, you can go to 20 webinars or Zoom calls and see somebody face-to-face -face, uh, on, a, on, a, on a computer. But as soon as you see them, uh, and you, you know, at some sort of a networking event, it, it, it equals to 20 meetings, 30 meetings. Because you just feel that person's energy and you automatically connect. I mean, I, as I, all of my partners that I met, and there's not a lot, there's very few, I'm very selective. I met face to face. Absolutely. I love it, man. Yeah. And it, it's more personable, right? Yeah. You can build a genuine relationship. It's, it's, you know, it's great having all this virtual stuff and being able to talk and chat over Zoom, but there's nothing like face to face. You're Absolutely. Right. Absolutely. Nothing beats it. It's expensive. Sure. It's like, <laughs> yeah, it can be. I mean, listen, just to be honest, let's say, let's say there was a uh, MFI event, right? So uh, I, the ticket's like 300 bucks, plus you got the hotel, plus the flight, the food, and then you can't go the same night. So you need like, to a two day buffer. So it's 1500 bucks, right? So is it worth it? Well, you tell me when I was at the MFIN event, right? I never forget this and I, and I share it everywhere. So I'm sitting at the table and I don't know anybody. And then uh, this guy comes over and uh, he's like, oh, can I sit here? And I'm like, yeah, yeah, sure, sit down. We started talking and then I found out that guy is George Abreu right? If you don't know George, he owns, I think, like 9,000 units or nearly 10,000 now, right? Has his own development company. And, you know, the, the guy is crazy, has like over a billion of assets, right? So he sits down. Then another guy comes over. I didn't know him either, but he's Kenny Wolf, right? He got like nearly 2 billion, sits down. One of the top brokers of Marcus and Millichap sits, sits down, so now we have a group of, let's say, eight people sitting at a table and chatting for over two and a half, three hours, right? So the question is this, how much would you pay to speak with those people in a group and just kind of, you know, chit chat about anything? They share stories, they share what they went through, stuff like that. So is it worth a thousand dollars? I think so. Absolutely. Just this meeting, that meeting, the three hour. I mean, I'm still speaking with all of those people. I'm very friendly with them. And uh, Marcus and Millichap guys sending me deals all the time. Jason, he's sending me stuff constantly. So is it worth it? Yeah. Yeah. But if I would be like sitting at home and thinking, yeah, it's like 1500 bucks. Can I spend it on something else? Yeah, I could have, but I would have missed on this. So just kind of yeah and it's a great point because i uh, hear a lot of times there's an event going on um next week for one of the communities that we're a part of and i know at least three people that i'm fairly close with and i asked if they were going and then like I'm, unfortunately i'm not you know i can't i just can't you know afford the ticket right now which i get you know there's some situations that you can't but the way that you're putting it the perspective that you're putting the spin on it is Yes, it's, you know, $900,000 to go to this ticket. 
all right, to get this ticket to go to the event, but you can walk out making $900,000 in the long run, you know what I mean? And potentially even more. So there, there's a lot of power in those rooms. <clears throat> I definitely yeah. agree. Yeah, it, it, It's like, it's like, you know, you have to pay, let's say those VIP tickets or something mm -hmm. like that to be like, you know, network and, you know, but everything happens just, just like that, just by, I guess, luck or whatever. You just kind of sit by the bar and people just, you know, just sit down around you and stuff. They see a, an empty table and everybody just starts talking. And it was just amazing. I, I still share that story and I, I'm just amazed how that happened, just completely natural. But I used to go to a lot of events, especially last year, uh, maybe five or six a year, all the major ones like uh, Best Ever Conference, one of the best ones out there in Utah just happened. Uh, you got uh, MM6, which is Multifamily Mastery 6. It was in Orlando. Uh, of course, there was MFIN. I went to both of them. Uh, and then there's a lot of conferences here locally, New York, New Jersey area as well. Uh, so the, the, it, it's a lot of stuff going on. And I and if you think about it, since you're a business person, that's what you do now. You, you changed your life. It, it's not like somebody's going to walk in, give you something, and you're just going to do it. No, no, no. You got to go get it. It, it it's a different mentality it's it's a it you have to just approach it a little bit different and uh, switch it up so the biggest hurdle is you know here like i got a note hanging here right in front of me what would you do if you were not afraid right mm -hmm. that, that that fear is your number one enemy Absolutely. so if, you know like i was afraid of cold calling because i because i hated rejection you know, and then somebody said, you know, when people and listen, when you call New Jersey people, they really pissed at you. You know, it's not like calling people in like Texas because those guys are friendly. You know, you're calling New Jersey people. They, they're really mad at you. So so when you call them. Right. And somebody said they're not angry at you. Picture how bad their life is. So they get angry at, a, you know, just somebody calling him instead of just saying hey listen i'm sorry it's not for me and just kind of hang up so if you twist it differently well don't forget i was calling like foreclosures so obviously yeah. i'm pissed so just kind of twist it a little bit and but still going for it so yeah i love it man you you, you have you have a you have a great outlook on, on these things that it's it's what you need to have right again yeah. this is it's all about the mindset. I, I was talking to somebody earlier on Monday on, on, on our team and they, they, they lack the confidence in speaking with brokers, right? They're, they're on our outreach team. They're lacking the confidence in speaking with brokers. And it's just because they haven't done it yet. They haven't really built up enough. It, they haven't put the reps in. They haven't built that experience of going out and doing it and realizing it's not as scary as they seem. Yeah. And they're creating, like you were saying, that fear, that barrier, and it's all really in their mind. And it's nothing else but the mindset that they're having. You, you know, it's crazy. I, I have something to add to this. this. This is awesome. So I used to call brokers too. Not anymore. We have a person that does it. But um, so, uh, like I said, my my market is uh, uh, Texas. So, I, and I, I wasn't confident. I didn't know what to say to a broker, right? When you mm -hmm. When you speak to a real estate agent, like residential agent, they would, they, you know, they love to talk and kind of walk you through it. But when you call a commercial broker and they feel that you're an amateur and you don't know what you're talking about, they, mm -hmm. they'll hang up on you because yep. their job is to sell. So if you can't speak their language, then there's, what are you doing? I mean, you're just trying to pretend you, you're fake. So they, they will not take you serious. So, so what I've done is I picked a market that was not my market and I picked like Cincinnati, not that it's bad, just mm -hmm. for the heck of it, who cares? I picked all the commercial brokers in Cincinnati and I started calling them nonstop and crashed and burned every <laughs> one of them because I called, they asked me a question and I don't know what to say. And I'm like, oh, I'll get back to you on that. And I'll just hang up or something like that. But what I was doing is I was getting the reps in. Yep. I was getting all the objections in. And you know why I was calling Cincinnati? I didn't care. It's mm -hmm. not my market. 
if I crash and burn and people think that Vlad is, you know, a nobody in Cincinnati, who cares? I'm not buying anything in Cincinnati. I'm buying in Texas. So after 30 calls to Cincinnati and speaking with 30 brokers, I started calling Texas and getting the same objections, the same answers, the same everything. And guess what happened? I had all the answers because I heard it from all the brokers in Cincinnati already. So that's how instead of just acting like a fool to the brokers that re I really do need in Texas, you know, I got all my reps in and in a different city. So that's how I kind of overcame this. I love that, man. That that's a great way to go about it. It really yeah. is because then you're, you're, you're reducing that fear barrier completely and just getting rid of it essentially. Yeah. So that's, it's a great idea. I'm gonna go tell that guy that to do that. I'm gonna tell him. Yeah, that. who cares? Like, call call Jersey. You know, call New York. You know, the because, like I said, after after you like you call Jersey people and then you call Florida people, you're like, oh my gosh, Florida people like the best thing ever. You have all these great conversations with them because they're happy over there. The weather is beautiful. It's sunny and stuff like that. Like in Jersey, it's 47 and it's raining. People are miserable. Come on. <laughs> Why, why do you live there again, right? No, well, you know, <laughs> I, I actually like it here because it, it's not that bad. It's better than New York because I lived in New York for 46 years. So, I mean, 26 years. So, comparing to New York, Jersey is like psh, completely different, uh, completely mm -hmm. different country, I should say. So, yeah. yeah. Man. Well, Vlad, we're getting here close to the end. I want to open it up for those in the audience. Every time we do a Zoom, I like to give everyone the chance to kind of ask a question. So I don't want to keep it too long. So if anybody has a question, now is the, now is the time. We give it like eight minutes because we're already over time here. And I want to be respectful of his time because it, it is later over there. So does anybody have a question that they want to ask? Otherwise, I'm going to continue asking for the rest of these eight minutes here. I got at least two more questions going once oh there we go i see michelle what do you got no nah, just real quick how long did it take you to scale to where you're right now four years wow yeah uh well i didn't take it serious in the beginning because i i was trying and when you try you will not succeed uh Understand I, noticed, that. I noticed the biggest change when i burned the boats when i like when i tried doing real estate Mm -hmm. I started losing deals and I wasn't, I didn't have a driver because I still, I was still employed, but when you kind of quit and you have nothing to fall back on and you know, there's no money coming in at the end of two weeks, yeah. you, you, you have no choice. It's like you almost pinned into the corner. So I would say good three years, but I, I wish I would have picked a lane sooner because I was trying too much. Like I was trying to be an agent, which is okay. I'm still an agent. I'm still selling residential houses. It's fun. It's okay. But I tried wholesaling and flipping because I spent a lot of time on that too. And I invested money into it and it went, it, it went somewhere, but I quickly, thank God, I quickly figured out to stop it and move to the ultimate goal. Because basically I'm thinking, I'm thinking like this, where do I want to be in, let's say, 10 years? I want to be a multifamily investor or commercial property investor. It doesn't matter what it is. You can be a developer too. So what do I need to get there? Do I need to be a flipper or a wholesaler now? In my case, no. Mm -hmm. So what do I need to do? So I need education. I need money. And I need connections, right? So what do I need for that? So the community took care of the connections and education money wise well it's literally speaking with people and my money is coming from residential sales so it's it's kind of like residential sales up here passive cash flow here and then it's slowly gonna go like this so passive cash flow here and i'm gonna do as little residential sales and maybe even quit real estate because i mean uh, being an agent because i really honestly won't need it I, i'm just gonna kind of see it but my ultimate goal is to um uh to have passive income coming in con constantly and consistently thank you it's i great needed question, that Michelle. good yeah, question yeah yeah i needed that and yeah, she's out there crushing in it in uh it's, it's a pain in the butt but hang in there <laughs> yeah yeah it yeah. is it is 
you you have your ups and downs that's for sure if anybody in real estate has ever told you that they there is no downsides to real estate and they have not been in it long enough then that's oh all it's I'm consistent saying. downs yeah mm -hmm. but, the, but the thing is it's how quickly you pick yourself up right so it's mm -hmm. like it's like uh, my broker right now he is working on everybody worked on a foreclosure if you let's say if you worked in you know creative space so typically it's like, okay, foreclosure, you got a lien, maybe two. His house has 42 liens, 42, right? He worked on this deal for one year and still going. The payday for him is $68,000, right? So 42 liens and now the owners, husband and the wife, they're divorcing. So you have 42 liens including tax violations and who knows the guy just said basically i'm not paying for anything i don't wow. care and uh and now they're divorcing and so so it it it's it's a lot of downs so whatever you see on facebook a lot of shiny stuff in front of taking pictures in front in front of beautiful buildings yeah okay when the sewage backs up it's not that beautiful anymore <laughs> Hey, you always got your your three T's, right? Is uh tenants, tenants, toilets, and termites. <laughs> that's why that's why I stopped being a single family owner. Yep. Because I literally it, it always happens on Friday night. I got a call and picture it's by Philly. So you got like deer and bear over there. Mm. So so she calls me, the tenant, because I was self-managing, and she goes, There's a raccoon on the roof. And I'm like, okay. And she's like, well, you have to get it off. I'm like, I'm two hours away. What do you mean? You live basically in the woods. She's like, no, 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 you got, it's crazy. We need an exterminator. I'm like, it's raccoon. He's, he's going to run away. <laughs> so it was this big brouhaha and stuff like that. I mean, it's not like she lives in, on 42nd Street in the city, right? It, it, it's in the woods. There's trees and like deer. So raccoon is, so she was freaking out and it's not the first time. So I'm like, listen, let's just sell this thing. And, and I'm so glad I did. Yeah. That you actually, you might be the first person I've ever heard say that they were glad they sold something. I think everybody I've ever spoken to has always said they regretted selling it. They wish they would have held on a little bit longer. I just heard, heard a story the other day about, um, buddy of ours <clears throat> another podcast we did where he had a property that was inherited he sold it for like 550 or something like that the person they sold it to ended up selling it in the 700s like a year later not even a full year and didn't really put any work all they did was add a fence and sold it for another 200,000 on top it, it it's awesome just think mm -hmm. about this way I was netting a thousand dollars a month, right? Net. So I was making 12 grand a year. I sold it and I made like a hundred and ten thousand dollars, right? How many years would it take for me to make a hundred and ten thousand dollars if Almost I'm netting a thousand dollars a month, right? I can take that a hundred grand and I can reinvest it in and I did in like three JVs because I put like 50, 50, and I just put like um, um, risk capital money into another one. So, so just think about it. I, I, the, the, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking the same way. Why would I sell? Because I'm cash flowing. Yeah, but I have a hundred grand, yeah. so I can do so much more with this instead of waiting, let's say, for five more years to slowly. And don't forget, that's why you hold multifamily for five years. Because after five years, everything starts to fall apart. Right? You got electrical, plumbing. You got the roofing and heating and all this type of stuff. It's falling apart. Plus, you kind of exhausted all your uh, depreciation. So that's why typical syndication is what three, five, three to five years. Yep. So it's it's kind of the same thing. Plus, ultimately, you don't want to be a slumlord, right? So if you buy something nineteen seventies, right, what in ten years it's going to be even older. That thing is falling apart. So when people say I got generational wealth or something like that, and I'm keeping it and holding it for my kids. Yeah, when you retire at 60, it's 1970s product. That thing is falling apart. It's going to be complete trash. So, you know, I, I rather upgrade because if you can get the money, that's where the most money comes from, right? From, a, from, from the event. When you sell a refi, 
refi, get your money out that you, you have tax-free money reinvested into something else. So I'm glad I saw it. I love it. I love it. That's a, you're, you're, a, you're full of it, man. You're, you're doing some really good uh, alternative perspectives to some of the norms that I've heard over and over and over again. So I really like it, man. It, you're dropping some, some good gems here tonight. The, yeah. Michelle said a different outlook. Excuse me. Yeah. A different outlook. Just, just think about <laughs> it. How much, how much time would it take you to make a hundred thousand? I mean, with that example, it's right under 10 years. Right exactly the there you go and and mind you it just whoever holds property tell me how much are you cash flowing net a month and i think a thousand is a pretty good number definitely is got, a good number we got, we, got, we got really lucky yeah so it, it, it typically it's what two three hundred dollars maybe yep. five hundred it depends yep. if you get it subject to okay that that's that can be higher but still but still that you know money in but still, you're just holding it. Yep. Uh, but in here, I have an opportunity to make so much money. So Hey, in Texas, you're lucky if you cash flow at all with a regular rental. Now, those taxes kill you, man. Yeah, and plus in Houston, you got crazy insurance. What is it, yeah. like 1600 a unit now, which is unbelievable. That's why I yeah. kind of stepped away from uh, Houston now. I, I stopped buying in, in Houston and just kind of moved up to DFW, um, you know. Yeah, and you're you're not the only one, man. You're not the only one. I'll, I'll give you a quick example, and then we're gonna jump off you here because we're already past the time. I don't want to keep you over. Yeah, on on a property we were we were purchasing in Houston. We initially the seller had their insurance. It was like three four hundred uh, per unit. We knew that was gonna go up. We got a quote eight hundred per unit. I'm like, okay, it's not bad, right? Two months later, after that insurance expires, it went from eight hundred per unit to 2000 per unit yeah. and that's a, that was a houston property and so we had to shop around to find the best one that we could and that was 1480 is what we ended up with yeah it, it's it's nuts when it it comes to insurance they're out of their minds honestly uh that's why i like the midwest mm -hmm. uh here i put my contact in the in the chat yeah drop uh, in uh shameless plugins how do, how does everyone connect with you lad oh, I, i'm i'm all over uh social media i i do facebook and I'm, I'm i'm on linkedin as well i do some instagram posts um i got a youtube channel i i like motorcycles right so i ride oh, I motorcycles so it's called wheels and real estate deals. I know it's cheesy. I know, but, uh, you know, I'm keeping it, it light. I'm not here to educate and be like, you know, throw a bunch of numbers and stuff like that and talk about like mess debt. And, you know, you want to, you want to know about it, read it in the book because it, it, this fabulous books, you have a uh, hands-off investor. There you go. One of the best books out there, uh, Burke, you know, great book. So I'm keeping it really light. Because, you know, I'm not here to, you know, just tell you all these rates and this and that and predictions. And it, it's fine. There's enough people that do it. Neil Bauer, he 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 knows his numbers. Go listen to him. Yep. Uh, so I did motorcycles and real estate, right? I go to like a networking event and I, I put like a shot of my motorcycle in there or something like that. They do a video. Just recently, I, I, I'm selling a house in Teaneck, right? It doesn't really, it's it North Jersey, Bergen County. Mm -hmm. So it just happened by accident, I promise. It did. So we're doing a photo shoot around the house and they posted it on MLS and my bike is front and center in front of a house. <laughs> I'm like, I really didn't mean it. It just really happened this way and everybody noticed. They're like, did you, you planned this, right? I'm like, no, 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 I didn't. I wasn't even there. I was like around the other side of the house. I, I, I wasn't, I wasn't with the photography, but yeah, the wheels and real estate deals. So that's hilarious. I love that, man. It, and it, it, it's genuine. That's what it is. That that's who you are, Vlad. It's yeah. coming across genuine, and that's really the best way to be in this space because people are going to smell bs a mile away they they will you already touched on earlier with the brokers the brokers aren't the only ones you know yeah. e everybody in this is space it's this very small community it seems like it's a big world it's a very small community more than half of those people you've mentioned i i've known all of them i've met most of them you know what i mean so it's yeah. it's a very very small community out there and as you get more in, invested into it with your time and energy 
people are going to start recognizing you. Like my wife went to that meetup and a bunch of people knew who she was. Yeah. And she's like, yeah, I don't know who that is, but I'm glad they knew me. <laughs> yeah, no, it's the same. It's the same people. Like, listen, if you go to, let's say, let's say five major real estate conferences that are happening around the country, like, uh, you know, you, you, you can Google them. You got the Rod Cleave conference, like I said, MM6, stuff like that. By the fifth one, you'll know like 75% of the people. You'll be like, oh yeah, I met him, I met him, I know him. So so you're going to know all these people. It's a tiny community because if you think about it, who can buy a single family house? A lot of people, yeah. But who can buy a $40 million business? Because that's what you're doing. Don't think of it as you buying a building because you're not. You're buying a business. Like you're buying... A uh, $40 million business with employees, right? You have all these filings you have to do. It's a, you have attorneys, you have accountants, you have everything. So you're running that business for five years. There is no quitting there. So if people say, I want to be an asset manager, it's a five-year commitment. Five years every single day. Do you have, let's say, five, six hours every single day to do asset manager to be an asset manager on a particular building, which is technically a business. It is. If you think about it, we're all business owners. We're not investors. When people say I'm an investor, I'm like, I don't even know what that means. Everybody is an investor. When you put some money with somewhere, you're investing it. But here you're buying this thing. And mind you, you're responsible for other people's money. It's not only your money. But you, you you collecting money like last raise we did was ten million, so so we collected ten million dollars and and my money was in there my friends money my mom invested with me, so I I you know like she if I God forbid lose her money yeah she'll scream at me and stuff like that, uh, but uh, would nobody else I would lose my face if I if if, if I would lose you know, other investors money. So it, it, it's really important to be on top of it and, and really just, just kind of switch your thinking where you're not just buying an asset and moving on. You are stuck with this thing for the next five years. Do you have the time to run it? So if you have a W2 or you have another commitment, can you successfully run this or find somebody else who can run it for you that you trust them? Right. Because if the trust is not there, like I see those, those these things on Facebook and I'm still puzzled how I see we got a JV deal. Who wants to come in? And I'm like, I, are you out of your mind? Let's say you buying a JV deal. Doesn't matter what it is. He's posting it on Facebook, right? On, on social media. So you mean to tell me I'm just going to go take a perfect stranger from the street Right. Don't know who he is, what they're doing, how much money, if, if they've been to, I don't know, prison or just shot somebody. I don't know what they are. And just, yeah, yeah, come on in. Yeah, let, let's have a joint venture together. Let's run this business together for how many, for, you know, next five years. How can you possibly do it? I, I, I don't get it. That, that's why vetting your partners, they, everybody says it's a marriage, but it is. If you think about it, shit, that's longer than a marriage. If you think about it, some marriages last like, you know, a few months. But in here, you, 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 you're literally stuck with that person for five years, at least, maybe even more. So it's, it's very important when people say, oh, yeah, you know, when I find the deal, the money is going to come, the partners are going to come. No, 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 no. The other way around. Find partners first. I, I should have been looking at partners. Did I get burned? No. But I picked some partners that were, then they're not really not doing anything. They're just kind of lingering. That's why Stop one part. of my deals is just, it's not doing bad, but it could be doing very good. But it's just kind of just there. Mm -hmm. Just not doing anything. Because nobody wants to put in any time. And there's just so much time you can do. Oh, you know, you can work on it by yourself. So it's it's really important to find good, solid partners. And uh, out of in four years, people that I started with, let's say ten people, three remain. Three are doing it now, and we doing deals with them now. That's why um, 
I like I said, I have two groups that I only do business with, and one group is uh, in Kansas City primarily. It's like my Midwest click, and another one in you probably know them, Tim Vest, Tim Vital. Um, uh, they're vertically integrated, and they primarily buy in the Carolinas. So that's who I deal with in the Carolinas, and that's it. Nobody else. I, I I'm not going to definitely post on Facebook and be like, "Oh, look at this amazing deal! Why didn't you come in with me and be a joint venture partner?" No, no, no. That doesn't work this way. Nobody, nobody does it this way. Yeah. Nobody that's truly doing it at a high level is doing it that way. No, yeah, because we'll it's way. it's it's silly. I mean, I I would never ask you, for example, and say, "Hey, listen, why didn't you give me a hundred grand?" And I'm going to put into this deal, which is basically a Facebook type of deal. Mm -hmm. Just being completely honest, it, it just it, it doesn't work this way uh, because there's no trust. Well, yeah, there's there's nothing. There's absolutely nothing. Mm -hmm. You don't know anything about that person. And I got into a deal like that. Like I said, it's not bad. It's a JV, but it's just it's just kind of, you know, we're trying to sell it now. It's a land deal in uh, Bradenton, Florida. It's a good deal. Overall, it, we basically, what we got is six acres of land, right? And it's seven units on it now. So we are rezoning it. So we, so a developer, not me, a developer can build 96 luxury units, or they can build nearly 200 of uh, like subsidized, subsidized units on it. So we're in the process of rezoning it now and selling it off. So that's our goal. But we should have sold it six months ago. That's why I meant it's just lingering. It's just kind of floating around, not doing anything. Yeah, Brainton is beautiful. Thank you. Yeah, but and and it's it it's it's they need housing, and and the county is like, come on, come on, come on, let's go, let's go, let's go. But and we're trying to fill out paperwork and do inspections and all these wetlands and all this nonsense that comes with rezoning of land. And if you know how to do it, it's just a total pain in the butt. Um, but with so many partners and it's just too many cooks in the kitchen and those cooks are just like, instead of cooking, they just kind of, you know, taking up space for the lack of a better word. Yep. Man, I might I know so not in the Zoom because they'll be pissed at me. <laughs> yeah, well, well, we'll see what happens, right? Uh, this, yeah. this, it, it does go on YouTube, so, you it's know, fine. hopefully they're not watching. Yeah, it's okay. Yeah, they'll, they'll be good. You didn't say any names. No one knows who it is. I was just about to say that, though. Babe. You'll be okay. <laughs> you fo you followed all the rules and regulations of what not what to do and what not to do. So you you, you covered your butt there. <laughs> uh, Vlad, man, I appreciate you so much for for jumping on. Uh, shout out to Jada for making the connection with you through through that group. Again, it's always about networking. It's always about relationships. We can go out and learn all this knowledge and all these strategies of what to do and everything that they're learning in that group is is super powerful. But the thing that they're taking out of it, and I know the same is you probably have the same uh, perspective, is the relationships. That That is truly the thing that is more valuable than anything else that we can teach or talk about or anything like that. It's always, always, always going to come down to the relationships for everything in this business and even outside of this business relationships yeah. are the key to all of this. Absolutely. But any totally. last closing remarks, anything you want to say, uh, Jada, can you drop in his contact information one more time for everybody? Yeah. Uh, one of the best things, you know, education comes uh, obviously with a uh, price because it's a lot of, you'll feel intimidated, which is totally fine. It's like somebody said, it's like drinking out of a fire hose. You have a lot of information coming at you. One of the best things that it, it, it came for me a little later, uh, which is just mental health. Uh, just taking care of yourself. That's really important. Have a positive outlook. Uh, meditate if you're into it. I mean, I do exercise, do yoga, whatever, run. But it's really important because if you, if you, let's say, if you do one thing, but then your body and mind is lacking, you will never achieve where you want to be, right? So, so it's really important because 
and, and ultimately, it, you, you, you know how it is when you get into a particular group, let's say in the multifamily space, and you see a lot of people are kind of doing the same thing, like a lot of runners and doing all sports and stuff like that. You'd be like, oh, yeah, let me try that, too. So that's how I got into meditation, for example. You know, I, I asked me a year ago, two years ago, not two years ago, would I do it? I'm like, it's silly, right? But now I'm like, oh my gosh, I can't believe I wasn't doing it. So it's 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 really important. Just don't go crazy completely and just burn yourself out because you can burn yourself out. Just take care of yourself mentally and, and just physically because, you know, people around you will start to notice right? Because you don't want to be all grumpy and just upset at everything. And, you know, just, just pay attention to you first and then everything else is going to come. So, yeah. Gems, nuggets everywhere, man. They're all over the place. This is truly powerful. So if you didn't, if you were, if you were blinking in that moment, if you sneezed for five minutes there, he's talking about taking care of yourself is the other key you build the relationships and you take care of yourself and the rest will come you just have to be taking the steps making the action steps moving forward constantly moving forward even if you're failing forward oh thomas in the chat health is wealth i yeah. love it, I love it. it, it it's, it's like even if you're failing you're learning something right it's whatever you apply it's how you apply that that uh that uh i i would say fail so like for example i'll give you an example right thomas edison somebody said hey uh edison you know he's an inventor and everything a lot of people know so they go like hey listen you uh tried 200 times of uh making a light bulb and you failed i mean it, it's complete nonsense right and he's like failed what do you mean i know 200 times how no, how to not to make a light bulb now how many times can you not make a light bulb so it, it, he, he kind of flipped it because now he's not going to waste his time on this and he's going to keep on pushing forward. So it, it's that type of mentality where you just got to think differently and uh, approach everything, uh, you know, how quickly you get up after uh, a failure. And every pe stuff is just not a failure. I mean, stuff, bad stuff happens. Yeah, deals fall through. You lose money, yes. But ultimately you learn something, you apply and you get better, you get up and you just keep moving forward. You know, it's like that, uh, uh, what do you call it? That iceberg, right? Mm -hmm. You know, the, the tippy top is your success. Everything on the bottom there, all that huge junk is all that failure. Nobody sees it. They just see that tippy, tippy top. So, but you have to get all that through that bottom stuff to get to the top. So kind of the same thing. Yeah, I see. I see that same meme all over the place. The iceberg one. Yeah, yeah, the good it, one. It's, it's powerful. It's powerful. I mean, it's really, really powerful. I mean, you know, look at Musk. I mean, that guy is uh, nuts. But for four years, he was launching those rockets, and they were all blowing up. Right? He, 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 he couldn't launch a a normal rocket up there uh, after the fifth one, and he spent half a billion billion dollars. He successfully launched one and he got what a two billion dollar uh you know a grant with the US government and now he got SpaceX and stuff like that. Just think about it. If you have half a billion dollars, would you go and spend it to launch rockets up in the air? I mean, you know, I don't know if I would. No, I, I probably still, wouldn't either. <laughs> I probably wouldn't either. But but still, I'd go buy I mean, more apartments. He, he literally risked everything because he had more vision and he had guts and stuff like that. So if he could do it, I mean, why can't we? Mm. Man, some powerful stuff, man. Really some powerful stuff. Uh, Vlad, thank you so much for being here, man. It, it, was, a, it was a real, <laughs> I think that was Jada. Jada said a powerful way to end it. And it truly was, man. You, you were just dropping gems left and right, offering really great alternative perspectives to some of the norms that or, or the yeah the norms that we've heard and learned to be accustomed to and I, I really appreciate that just in general like it, it it it's a very fresh outlook on something that has been kind of just set in stone for some of us so Vlad we appreciate you so much hopefully this is not the last call that we have um, we'll definitely have to connect soon I actually I'm working on something in Kansas City maybe there's an opportunity there uh, we'll see what happens but. 
Again, appreciate you so much. Audience, we appreciate all of you guys so much for being here. Uh, it's good to be back. We're super stoked. We're going to be here specifically about multifamily every other week. And then in between those weeks, it's going to be the Mud Club podcast. So watch us or not, but just come share the wealth. The thing that we're trying to build here is community and create those relationships. So again, guys, we appreciate you all. Jada, cue the music.